Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. And those of you that are watching via the internet or YouTube or wherever you're finding these, I don't know where they're all at. I know that they're being shared by a lot of people around the world, and I'm thankful for that and grateful. That's an answer to prayer. And uh, God has opened the doors. I can show you things on the, the web. Crossland's Family Counseling has this week uh, 15,000 followers. That's a lot of people. Bishop Ronald Powell has 12,000. Uh, they're not the same people. And Dr. Ronald Powell has about 589, so... <laughs> I'm thankful for every one of them, though, and, you know, you can't get that many people in a church, but they can be influenced by what's going on right here. Amen. And we have a lot of people that are watching. You know, not all of them are punching the buttons we'd like them to punch, but you can do that, too. Sub uh, you know, suggest, uh, what do you call it? When you subscribe. subscribe, thank you for the word. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and... Uh, and if you can, you can go out and follow one of those other places. Uh, and they won't let you befriend me if you're not on my friend list yet because I'm on, I have 5,000 friends on there. By the way, I don't know but a handful. <laughs> so, <laughs> but they like, to, they like to be on that channel. So I'm, I'm glad they're there. Uh, just take advantage of the things that are there. We, we do all of this for the glory of God. And I, I want you to know that He's using us as He said He would when we got rid of that box mentality. We had prophets came, uh, come in that would say, and this message is going to go around the world. Did it do that? Not the way we thought it would, but it did. How do you get out of a box and go around the world and have a box at the same time, right? Well, we're not into building boxes. We're into building God's people, and that's why we're still here. And I thank God that He's, He's allowed us to stay through all of the things that we have been through. And if I can get my electronics to work here, we will, we will get into this message. Today we're going to talk about rewiring your mind that God's not answering my prayers. And there's a lot of reasons why prayers are not answered and today I hope I can give you some secrets and some answers to that. But you know I'm not going to make them up. You know how I work. I only use the Word of God. You can call me a false prophet <laughs> online and I, I will say nothing to you when you say that because if I'm using the Word of God it's not an opinion. It's not your opinion that matters. Amen. Amen. It's the Word of God. Uh, and, you know, as I said to you in pre-service that, you know, I don't follow people that say they're prophets and prophesying about political biases. I won't do it. You know, and it, there's a reason for that. God has already told us what to expect in this hour and when they're shifting and making you, they're dividing. They're not, you know, and anything that's dividing isn't God. God wants us to be one in Him. And you can't be one without Him. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to be talking about that a little bit. And, and, but before we get right into the message, I'm going to give you a few things the Lord said to me this morning. Would you like to hear that? It's in the Word of God if you want to turn there. <laughs> in Jeremiah 29, you know that we always speak of Jeremiah 29 and people take things out of context. And I want to give you a little context. Jeremiah was hearing from God where the people were in Babylon and they were all in Babylon in captivity. But God actually tells the people of God that's, that are in Babylon. He said, Work, garden, eat from your own table. When, when the country says do this or do that, do it because it'll be better for you. 
In other words, be an agreeable sort of person. God is looking for people that have an excellent spirit and have people skills. Not everybody has people skills, and I want to tell you that. And those are the most important things for a human to have. You know, once you've got God, you've got to know how to treat other people, right? And talk to other people. So, and listen, if, if you think I'm getting on your case, maybe I am, but I'm not. It's not personal. It's God, okay? It's His Word. If, if you come under conviction, just say, I'm sorry, Lord. That's all, and don't, don't sit there and browbeat yourself and that kind of thing. He doesn't like that at all. He's trying to heal your spirit, and He will. How many of you would like to be healed? completely. Well, he'll do that for you. But in Jeremiah, I'm going to look at 10 and 11. We used to usually say Jeremiah 29 and 11. But that's the background. They're in captivity. And they're asking God about things. All of them are asking, but there were false prophets, just like they are today. If you read that chapter, and God says to Jeremiah, look, these are false prophets. They're prophesying what's going to happen in the land. They're prophesying, you know, who's going to be king. They're prophesying. Listen, sounds just like what we just went through. But God said, they're false prophets. Now, I can't judge a, a person, but God does. And He told Jeremiah that the angel of the Lord of hosts has said... They're false prophets. A false prophet is a false prophet, isn't it? But in Jeremiah 10 and 11 it says, this is, the, uh, is God's word on the subject. As soon as Babylon 70 years are up and not a day before. Now this is in the message translation. And not a day before. What do you get from that very sentence? It's planned and you can't change the plan. The plan was perfected by God before you got here. And running to Him in your terror and your fear and that kind of thing, it doesn't change a thing. And all these people that were sitting out there and they were talking bad about the king that was over them. And I, Listen, they went into captivity because they were disobedient to God. But God knew that was going to happen. He actually chose where they would go into captivity so that that would change them as people. Do you understand if you're going through something rough, you might need to talk to God? And you, not, you really need to hear Him because he's, he's put you in a season because of something that you have done wrong and not according to His will. He puts you into a season. And that season will last till He says, that's the last day. And you cry out to God all day long after that. He's already made the plan. I'm, lo I'm looking at that with you. See, it says here, and not a day before. This is 70 years until it's up, and not a day before. I'll show up and I'll take care of you as I promised, and I, I will bring you home. And I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Do you think God knows what He's doing? <laughs> and I have planned it out. Plans to take care of you and not abandon you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. What did God say? When you pray, if you come to me, I'll listen. And there's a lot of people say, well, he didn't ever hear me. He didn't listen to me. He doesn't speak to me. Now, you come on his terms. You understand that? He already knows what you have need of before you pray. The answer's on the way. But the answer you might not always like. How many of you have ever gotten an answer from God you didn't expect and you didn't like it when it got that way? 
Well, God knows best about you. You know, He's trying to get you through to make you the person that He wanted you to be from the beginning. By the way, He started the work in you and He's going to finish it. you understand that? And you can't change that work because that plan is a plan of God. It was set in order by His Word. And His Word appeared to men. He had a name. Anybody know what that name is? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. If you were Jewish, Yahushua. Okay. <laughs> but you know, you gotta have a little spit in your, your mouth when you say things like that. <laughs> so I wanted to read the the rest of this. He says, Yes, when it gets serious about finding uh, finding me and want it more than anything else. See, he says, you come to me and you will find me. And when you want it more than anything else, I'll make sure uh, you won't be disappointed. That's my decree, says the Lord. And I'll turn things around. I'll bring you back from all the countries into where I drove you. Who drove them? God's decree. Bring, uh, and I'll bring you home to the place uh, from which I sent you off in exile. You can count on it. In other words, He'll restore the brokenhearted. The people that, you know, He has a plan. And everyone that wants to change God's plan, I'm just trying to get you to hear the Word of the Lord. This isn't a false prophet speaking to you. This is the Lord God speaking to Jeremiah that spoke to them on that day. And we quote it, but we quote it without a knowledge of where that's set. He was speaking this, this word to them in 70 years of exile. And he said, and it's not going to end one day too soon. How many of you mothers and fathers have ever said you know, to some to some of your children, well, we're going to the mall, but and then they come to you and they just, I to, you told me you were going to take me to the mall and, and, and for heaven's sake, it's, you know, you told me that two hours ago. Look, wait a minute. I'm going to take you to the mall when I'm good and ready. <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> okay. Well, the Lord is sort of like that too. He's a, he's a Father. And when He says something, He's going to do it, and He's going to do it in His time. And we, you sing that song, In His Time, right? We need to sing it more and, and remind people. Another word that He gave to me was in Psalm 62, 5 through 6, and it says, uh, But I stand silently before the Lord, waiting for Him to rescue me. How many of you have ever wanted the Lord to rescue you? For salvation comes from Him alone. Yes, He is my rock, my rescuer, my defense, my fortress. Why then should I be tense with fear when trouble comes? You say you have faith, but is it moved by circumstances? Do you know that God's Word didn't change just because you're going through something? That God's Word is there to let you know the promise that He made to you is going to be fulfilled. And there's not a thing you can do while it's going on because He is having something done in the background you have no idea about. And He's trying to get you on board with Him. Understand, I've got this for you. I've never read a story where there was people of God and there was a person that was leading God's people that that person wasn't told, come into the presence of God, sit there until He speaks to you. And when He does, go out and do exactly what He said. You know, Jehoshaphat. Well, there's two armies against us, Father. Well, you know, okay. I didn't see that, right? <laughs> Here's what I want you to do. Well, I want you to go out and get the 
harps and the sack button, all whatever that kind of stuff is. And and uh, I'm not a musician, but they they had some instruments I didn't <laughs> had never seen, I guess. But anyway, when I looked into this, when Jehoshaphat was standing before the Lord, he said. I want you to take the people out on the top of this mountain. I want you to praise me with all of those instruments. Does that make sense when you've got two armies that are armed to the teeth against you? Go out and praise me in front of them. And all of a sudden, God sends a spirit upon those people. That spirit, he turned them over to a spirit, I would say it that way, a murderous spirit. And that murderous spirit made those armies turn against each other. They killed each other, and God's people were standing on the mountain watching this happen, and nothing happened to them. God doesn't forget his people. And they're sitting around, what are you going to do, God? But they're not coming in faith, they're coming in fear. They don't read the Word of the Lord. They don't hear it preached, and that's the reason I preach it this way. Almighty God wants you to have faith when the situation looks bleak. He wants you to know that He's already heard your prayer if you prayed in faith according to His will. Amen? So, but anyway, in Matthew 6 and 6, it says, here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet place, a secluded place, so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can, uh, can manage. The focus will shift from you to God, and you will begin to sense His grace. Now that is the message translation, but that's exactly what that meant in your translation. Get quiet. Stop cl clamoring, trying to manipulate God or tell Him how to rule. How many of you, have uh, you know, you've done that? God, this is what I want you to do, and I'm going to be upset if you don't do it. Uh, you can't talk to Him like that. Any child that ever talked, in my generation anyway, that ever talked back to a father or mother, uh, they didn't like the outcome. <laughs> Amen? Amen? How many of you have ever not liked the outcome? <laughs> you learn that there are ways that, you, you know, that are acceptable and there's ways that are not acceptable. Well, but he's telling you, get quiet. How many of you can do that? This is the secret to hearing God is to shut up your mind and turn your focus on Him, not you. He already had... He, you can bring all of your cares before Him. He says, cast them on me. What does that mean? Cast them on Him. That means give it to Him and shut up. Give it to Him and shut up. He, he knows the voice that's in your heart. He knows everything. The, the weakest cell in your brain that's whispering something, He hears it. This is God. Now, He's not like you. Now, don't ever make God like you. Then you could manipulate Him, right? But He wants you to get to the place that you, you understand that He is above everything created and everything created is subject to Him, and only He has truth, so we need to go to Him to get the truth. And the truth will set you free. In other words, you're not going to be in bondage when you go away from it. If He said, this is going to last this long and not, not a day longer, but not a day sooner. There's a plan in place. I'm going on vacation. I've got a motel for seven days. When I go down and I get in that motel, I want those people to let me alone and let me be there and be quiet for seven days. I didn't 
count on this last storm. What was its name? Nico. Nico. Yeah, that sounds like an Nico. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the beaches are eroded now. I don't even know if that that place is still standing, but and we've cut it down to three days. Anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, I want you to hear, though, that there, there are plans that men make, but our plans never are going to trump God's. You'll never be able to override the plan of God. But when we... Find the plan of God, and that's what you go to God for, to hear Him and to hear what He is saying. If you sit there and say, well, He never speaks to me, you just don't get quiet enough. You're trying to rule heaven, and that won't happen. You go to heaven to find out what the plan is so you can rest from that fear that's on you. And hand it all over to God, knowing that He's already got the plan. You know, well, I don't like His plan. <laughs> you don't understand His plan and all that He's doing to change human hearts. Amen? Amen. So, when I'm saying that, you need to be an adult in Christ. That's what I'm telling you. You know, I don't get rattled by a lot of things. I get people that think they can rattle my cage, but I don't, I don't ever do that. I look at them. I look at them where they are. I understand their mentality. I understand their fears. I understand all of that stuff. But, you know, at that point, I'm going, we're not going to join in on this conversation. When you settle down and... In other words, when you get at peace, I'll talk to you. But while you're in that rattled state, I'm not talking to you. Why would I say those things? Because what happens in any state of affairs where you go in and the person is all over the place emotionally, is there any good thing going to come out of that? Say, no. People, they're spitting fire at each other. They're spitting fire at each other. By the way, and they're going to go home after the spit fire and they're going to rehearse all that stuff in their brain. They don't let go of it. They have that root of bitterness gets into their heart and all of a sudden they're, they're turning into old crotchety people with old gnarly hands and and, uh, you know, because they live that kind of life. They're never at peace with anybody. They can't get along with anybody. You know, and, you know, the Bible says if you want friends, you have to show yourself friendly. Okay, but, you know, you can't be, uh, you know, a rascal and think that everybody's going to have to love you like you are. You change to fit. Well, I'm not going to change to fit anything. Yeah, you're a jackass and everybody knows it. Isn't that the truth? You don't have to tell anybody they're jackasses. They know they're a jackass because everybody that's around them disappears. You ever go to that Christmas party, the family Christmas party, and you've got somebody that shows up there and sits down beside you, and the whole time there's a, oh me, look my rheumatism, oh my God, I, you know, and, and what he did and she did, and and, uh, and the crowd disappears. I gotta go. Yeah, everybody's got an appointment somewhere else. You know it so. Now, I'm telling you, I've gone to the Word of the Lord. And I found that that's the same all through the Word of the Lord. He says that we don't go into places where these people are. We're not supposed to sit down at the table with them. We're not supposed to allow them to engage our spirit in something that is not His peace. He came to make me free and I don't, don't have time to you know, settle into your bondage. If I have a conversation with you, it's to set you free. 
<laughs> I want you to understand God has he has a plan and he will answer your prayers if they're in him and according to his will now we're going to oh I've got the thing I've got to do that anyway we're going to rewire your thoughts on God's not answering why God's not answering my prayer I, th I thought well I'd call it you know the secret uh, answered prayer but I other people abuse that so I won't do it okay so if I can make this thing work okay oh there we go I went two or three too far anyway what does unanswered prayer mean I know it sounds redundant to you but this is a mentality that's it's the way that we're looking seeing and perceiving something it prevents us from receiving anything uh, that God has for us. The reason it does is because, you know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen? If you have faith, you're going in with confidence. And the Bible talks about that. We'll show you in a little bit. Confidence is necessary when you go into the presence of God. All of us in this room have had weaker points in our life and we go in screaming at God, and why are you allowing this? And all that kind of stuff. Listen, uh, and He didn't answer because it wasn't in faith. It wasn't in faith. So the secret, I'm going to give you some secrets today. Would you like that? Okay. <laughs> Rewiring the thought God is not answering a prayer. Let's let's overcome this today. All right. Let's don't don't allow this to go on another day in your life. Uh, God wants, to, and He has something to really say about this. Okay. First, some of these things I told you about are here. Pray the Word of God. God's Word was God's idea. When you pick up the Word of God, the Bible is the will of God. Say that. The Bible is the will of God. If God has willed it, that's the way it's going to be. He is not going to change His will to accommodate your whim. <laughs> okay. So He intends for it to come to pass. And 1 John... 514, let me see if I can get it up here so I can read it to you. It says, oh, let me put glasses on so I can see it, so I can read it to you. <laughs> okay. It says, And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will. Okay. I, I, I need to say, I, I need to hear somebody say, I heard that. It's according to His will. If it's not according to His will, mm. okay, you're going to be disappointed, right? No, God will never disappoint. You just have to get on, on board with what He's doing. And you have to understand why He's doing it. Once, though, you settle that in your heart that, that you can have confidence with God because He's in control of all that is. And nothing shall by any means harm you. Did you ever read that? So, any, let's go on. And this is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will... He heareth us. And if we know that He hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desired of Him. What's your desire? Is it to do the will of God? The creature is always trying to tell the Creator how to run all his business. To this day, I have never gone to him with that kind of an attitude and gotten anything. If you go in knowing this, you have to tell fear. 
not here. Not here. God is in control. Amen? Amen. He has not left control, uh, lost control. And you know what? And the devil can't do anything about it. The devil can scream and shout and make, make a lot of noise, but it's a gnat at a picnic, swat it and be, be done with it. Okay? But swat it with the right thing, the will of God. So anyway, I want, I want to go on anyway, and John 14, 15 says, If we ask anything according to His will, His Word is His will, we know He hears us, and he, we know that we have our, whatever we ask for at that point. John 15 and 7 says this. It says, If you abide in Me... What does abide mean? Live. Well, if you're inside of Christ, He's inside of you, then what can happen to you? I'm trying to dispel the lies of the adversary that you happen to believe. This is why we're doing this rewiring of the mind because it's very important you know the Word of God, not somebody's opinion. The Word of God tells us what we can believe. And if our belief is in that and that alone, then God's got you. Outside of that, you might need to run and hide in a cave somewhere. Okay? I'm just telling you. In Him we have to abide. In me, He says that. And my words abide in you. Wait a minute. When the adversary comes, you know what you need? The weapons. And the Word of God, and the sword of the Spirit, and the helmet of salvation will keep you from anything that the adversary is throwing at you. But that Word has to abide in you. Do you read the Bible and say, Speak to me. Speak to me, O Lord. Your servant's listening. If you don't go to the Word of the Lord that way, you're missing what God wants you to have from Him. That's His will. And His will is what He's going to judge on Judgment Day. Everything outside of His will will be judged for what it is. Amen? So, I want you to get this. This is a very serious point. These are secrets right in front of your face. Ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. If you're in Him, He with, will withhold no good thing from them that love Him and are called according to His good purpose. He doesn't withhold good things. He will give you the kingdom. It's His desire to give you the kingdom. You understand these words are already there. So when the adversary is trying to rattle your cage, you say, I've already got the kingdom. You know, that's what we were talking about last week. When Jesus had fasted and He was hungered and He, has, he was thirsty and He had fasted for 40 days. And listen to me. Satan came to Him and said, if you bow down and serve me, I'll give you all the kingdoms, kingdoms of the world. Uh, who already owns all the kingdoms of the world? If thou be the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. If thou be the Son of God. Do you know who you're talking to, Satan? <laughs> you don't remember, do you? You hit your head while he threw, he threw you out of heaven. So anyway, you've got to understand that we have to overcome how many things? All things. And we do that through faith. And God will hear the prayer of faith because the prayer of faith is going to be along the lines of the will of God every time we pray it. Now I need to go on because I know that you can't stand much of this. Uh, you know, the second thing, God always says yes to His Word and, and His promises. Listen. When we look at it that way, 
if he's going to say yes, we know when we go in, we have confidence that's in confidence he's going to say yes because we already have his word on it. Amen. I'm I'm trying to get you confident in your relationship with God. But you can't you can't be confident in a relationship you don't have. Or one you have once in a while only when you go to him and try to get your way and think that he's going to have to move in your direction. He doesn't move. When he spoke it, it was not for just this day and time. It was for every generation forever. So you've got to get used to who he is and what he says. Okay? Now I'm preaching very good. So y'all y'all need to encourage me once in a while and let me know that you're hearing by saying amen. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter uh, chapter 1, it says this in the 20th verse. It says, For all the promises of God in Him, I want you to notice these words, abide, and then here we got in Him. For all the promises of God in Him are yea, that means yes, and in Him, twice He make, uh, makes that known. In Him, Amen. That means let it be so. So if you know that you're in Him, you're in His will, you're, you know His Word, you pray His promise, you can be assured that you will have whatsoever you say. Amen. I'm trying to make this as plain as the nose on your face. But sometimes that's not so plain, right? Okay. <laughs> unto the glory of God by us. Listen, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Well, I need to go on. There's no assurance, by the way, if it's not in Him, and you go to Him, that you're going to get your prayer answered. A lot of people say, well, God doesn't hear me. He doesn't make exceptions to anybody. You have to get in line with His will and wishes. If you want Him to answer your prayer, you have to do it according to His will. That makes sense? And thinking you can butt your head on God's door and think that He's going to hear and make an exception for you. Do you understand that's the problem? That's the problem. I know somebody's going to write me about this and say bad things, but anyway, it's all right. I got a circular fire a file that's had hundreds of people in it, and and you can do, go there too. The, the word of God is the word of God, Amen. Amen. And if you try to change it, uh, anathema. You know, I'm not I'm not the judge. I just tell you, if you're not preaching what he said, it's it's another word. It's not his word. Anyway. Let's go on. Uh, there's no assurance, as I said, uh, that your prayer will be answered if it's not something God has already promised in His Word. He doesn't change His mind. He's God. He doesn't have to. He doesn't make mistakes. He knows what He created. He knows what His creation is about. He knows how weak they are. He knows that they don't stay in the Word. And when they don't stay in the Word, they get distanced from Him. And then they can get, get out there and do their own thing for a while and then it didn't work. And then all of them become prodigals and have to run home. And, and Father, I've sinned against You and all that kind of stuff. Listen, He knows you sinned against Him. He, he knew everything you did while you were away from Him. Has God ever told on any of you? come into church on Sunday and get preached to. Not me. Oh, yeah. There's other liars in hell too. Okay. <laughs> All right. Got to go on. Number three, you've got to walk by faith. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, regardless of how you feel. Now, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says it this way, for we walk by faith and not by sight. If you don't see the answer yet, it doesn't mean that the answer's not there. It's just that you've got to have eyes to see it. 
And eyes to see in the Spirit means that you got eyes that can see afar off. The Bible talks about eyes that can see afar off. And it also talks about eyes that can't see afar off. And those are two different spiritual aspects and, and you have to understand where you are. If you can't see it yet, you got to get some glasses that can see it from His perspective. Amen? Amen. All right. Going on, going on. Okay. Uh, you, regardless of how you feel, faith says God has heard me and He answers. He answers. If you pray according to His will, you abide in Him. Listen. And you're listening to Him and listening for His voice. He will speak to you. If you're trying to tell Him how to run the universe, not a chance you're going to hear Him. Amen? Okay, Mark 11, 24 says, uh, believe and you have uh, believe that you have received okay let me explain that because according to your nose on the face it is not that clear believe that you have have that's past tense received see the word of God occurred with God before the world began and the word of God appeared according to John 1 and it had a body and it lived and it moved and breathed around us his name was Jesus. And the Word of God gave us more of an understanding about God. And then He said, it's, uh, it's something I've got to do. I've got to go back to heaven. And, uh, you know, they're going to kill me. And Peter stood up and said, you know, not, not on my watch. And then Jesus said to him, you know, Satan, get thee behind me. You're an offense to me. In other words, trying to tell God, uh-uh. Do you understand what he did? Why it was an offense? Because he was trying to mess up the plan of God. And Jesus was going to die, but it was only three days, but he was going to be preaching three days to the people in, in Hades, and they were going to, he was going to open up Hades, and they were going to march out of there with him. The dead were seen in the streets doing something. You remember what it said? Preaching. Can you imagine that God speaks to, to people in hell and they come out of hell, they would be preaching? <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> I'm sure that was the very first things that came out of the mouth. You don't want to go to this place. Okay, well, all right. So, I, I need to go on. Good Lord, I'm, I get all excited about what I'm I'm telling you. Anyway, Mark 11, 24 says, Believe you have received. Believe you have received. Past tense. It's already paid for. God's already proved it. And now the only thing that's between you and the answer is His timing. Hurry up, God. He doesn't have to hurry. Hurry up, God, is you panicking. Get your faith up to, st uh, to where it needs to be and you won't have to panic. Those of you that are listening on this camera, you need to listen to this message. It will change your life. Four, don't throw away the towel or throw in the towel when you're going through something, you know, and it's not working. Don't do that. You know, when you throw God away... Uh, that's a big thing to throw away. You're in trouble already. Because you didn't, didn't have the wisdom to know that what God does is complete wisdom. Hebrews 6.12 says uh, that through faith, let's see if we can find it here. Through faith, I didn't even put it on there. Anyway, through faith and patience we inherit the promises of God. Did one of those words uh, mess with you? <laughs> and a bigger word than that, inherit. <laughs> Something has to die. <laughs> he died to provide all of these things. That's the reason it's past tense. 
And we inherit, that means we have to wait on His timing. Have you ever heard the reading of a will? Well, after you turn this age, you can get it. But until you are responsible, no chance. <laughs> it will be spent, wasted, and you will have nothing. How many of you know that you've got to have wisdom once you get money? If you don't have wisdom, it, you buy everything you can look at. And then one day, when you really need it, you don't have anything. So then you go out and you borrow money. And then you become a slave to the, uh, to the person that you borrowed money from. And then you have to work in that slavery and under that burden, you're not free anymore. You belong to somebody else. You're somebody's slave. Amen. I know you don't like this, but this is the truth. It's in the Word, you know. <laughs> the borrower is the slave to the lender. Proverbs. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm trying to get to your heart. Okay. If I can get over your exceptions. <laughs> Five, apply the secrets of persistence. There's a story in the Bible, in Luke and in Matthew, that talks about a woman that kept going to Jesus and knocking and telling Him, you know, look, and they're talking to a judge, look, 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 and these people are not doing me right. They, they've got my stuff. They've... Well, the judge said that. What am I to rule on that, you know? And then, but then he thought she would shut up. He didn't know women very well. <laughs> Don't write me. <laughs> I've been married almost a half a century, okay? And uh, still, she's beautiful and makes me look good. Amen. <laughs> anyway, she kept on. Every day, she'd go back to him. And finally, he has to make a ruling because she persisted. He had to look into the case to see if she had a justified means for what she was asking for. If it was in line with the law of the land at that point. When all the... Uh, the uh, the dots came into order. He ordered it done. Now, he, you know, he was looking at her. He was listening to her. But when she made her appeal, it was a case that was point by point by point. Have you ever listened to somebody that had all their ducks in a row? <laughs> And you tried to argue about, you know, and they, they got the facts and you don't. <laughs> See, you understand truth is always going to eclipse the lie. And any attempt to try to manipulate the truth is a sin. Amen. What is not a faith is a sin. Faith is belief in an unmovable God whose word never changes for all of you false prophets that think he's making exceptions today. You need to repent. You need to get saved. Amen? Amen. Listen, i got to go on because, you know, you can't. I'm rattling your cages too much today. You won't be back next week. Anyway... <laughs> Number six, don't let condemnation rob you of your confidence. In 1 John 3, 20 and 22, if our heart does not condemn us, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Then we have confidence toward God and whatever we ask, we receive. Where's the confidence? In God. It's not in your appeals. It's not in your talking. It's in getting in line with His Word. Listen, I want to tell you again, the sweetest thing you can do is go and learn to enjoy His presence. Sit before Him quietly. 
Let the things that are going on around you bless you. Be filled with the glory of God. You can look around. He said that these people are without excuse. And, and again, in Hebrews, you know, because they can see all that God has done and they try to explain it away. And there's science, so, falsely so called. Listen to me. And scientists too. I'm one of you. But you got to find where the truth is. Stop exploring other things when the truth is right in front of you. By the way, there's no Martians on Mars. Billions of dollars later. Well, I'm looking for an amoeba. It didn't work out down here either. <laughs> so... Uh, Fools are that. They think that they got money that you make that they need to spend on things that you don't want and are not good for you, right? That's what politics is. I want your vote. I'm going to do this for you. <laughs> yeah. No, they're not. They don't know you by name. They don't care about what you're going through. You need to run to the one that can make a difference, not to a politician. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you now, and they will have to answer to God. Every king, every president, every senator, every congressman, every governor, every mayor, every policeman, they'll all stand before Him and give an answer for what they do. Line up with Him and you won't have to give a bad report. And you won't have to pay the penalty of a bad report. Amen. 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 Well, I thought I was under grace. I have not said you're not under grace. Only grace makes you saved. Amen. Through your faith. Faith in what? In what He said. I'm trying to get your mind rewired. I hope today I gave you some insight to make sure that happens for you. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name today, we've come to that time that we have to say goodbye to this camera time and, and uh, to the people that are around us. I hope that you have a blessed day, all of you who watched. Father, I also hope that in heaven the praises are great and that you're having a wonderful day with your saints around you father i thank you for that hope that we will all soon get that reward that you have promised in jesus name we pray bless the people that look to you and look to your word and still can have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen.